Hello campers and welcome to another edition of Mr. Rapture's Amateur Reading Hour. <clears throat> Today's book is called Painting the Wind, a story about Vincent Van Gogh by Michelle Donetti. And before we get into the story though, I want you to consider uh, two questions that you'll be asked to write about at the end. So I'm going to show you those questions. Okay, the first question is, write three reasons the people of RLA reject Van Gogh and his art. And then the second question is, what did Claudine see that the rest of the people did not see? What did Claudine see in Van Gogh's art that the rest of the people did not see? So there will be your two questions that you'll have to write about at the end. And I will provide a template, uh, a place for you to uh, put your answer. So let's begin. Painting the Wind by Michelle Dianetti. Claudine was the last child of many and on her family worked. For times were poor, her father worked on the barges on the River Rhone. Her brothers and sisters worked in the orchards and farms in the country surrounding Arlay. Claudine wished to be outside too, where she could lift her face up to the wind and the sun. But, not, but for now, she worked indoors with her mother, cleaning other people's houses. One morning, Madame led, my mom led Claudine past the ancient Roman arena where crowds roared at the bullfights every Sunday. Claudine longed to climb the three arched tiers. From the top, she could see over the jumble of red tiled roofs to the green and blue countryside and the yellow sky that hung over all. But my mom had a new house to clean and she hurried Claudine through the narrow streets to the River Rhone, where it crooked like an elbow at La Place La Martine. When in the yellow house on La Place La Martine lived a painter, his neighbors called him Vincent. The people, the children called him Fauru, red-headed fool because of his red gold hair and because he painted outside, even on days when the sun was blistering hot, even on days when the mistral made the trees bend sideways and blew chimneys from the roofs. Stay out of the painter's way, whispered my mom. He is crazy. The mistral has blown away his mind. And so Claudine kept quiet as a mouse while she scrubbed the red tile floors. The yellow house smelled of oil paints, canvases leaned on the walls, and while Claudine worked, she looked her fill. Vincent's paintings did not look like other paintings, neat and perfect. They were thick and wild, bright suns curled in spangled light. Sunflowers flowers blared like little trumpets. So beautiful, my mom, she whispered. But my mom muttered under her breath about crazy men who called themselves artists. When Vincent came in with a painting under his arm, Her shirt sleeve smeared, his shirt sleeve smeared with yellow. My mom sent Claudine outside to watch the front step. As they walked home from the yellow house, my mom told Claudine she must always work hard and not be friends with and not be foolish like the painter. Yes, my mom said Claudine dreamily. She was only half listening. Something was happening to her eyes. The trees no longer looked green to her, but gold and purple and orange and blue, and their branches danced like flames. The people of Orle worked hard, but at night they shopped, and on Sundays they rested. Claudine wondered if Vincent ever rested. She found him painted in the ancient Roman graveyard. She spied him painting by the quay. 
She discovered him at the river where she and my mom did the family washing, painting the women at work. His women were hunched like turtles. His river was a flowing blue curve. The sky he made was green, and over it a yellow sun spun in circles. Claudine stood behind Vincent, watching until she hungered to make a painting too. She ran to Mama's side and took up one of Papa's shirts. She swirled it around and around in the cold water, turning it like Vincent's son. At home, Claudine thought of the drawings she had seen in the yellow house. She wanted to make drawings like that, where the sky was not an empty space, but full of clouds and birds wheeling. She took charred wood from the fireplace and bent to draw on the stone floor. She tried to draw trees and strong black marks like Vincent's. She tried to make the branches bend and the leaves take flight, but she felt clumsy. The charcoal smudged. She could not make a tree come alive at all. All through the harvest, Claudine worked around new wet canvases at the yellow house. While men and women gathered fruit and grain, Vincent's crop of paintings grew and grew. When the sun burned down red, setting fire to the red, the setting fire to the red tile roofs, Vincent painted the sky red with color straight from his tubes. When the sun burned down yellow, he painted the sun, the sky, the fields yellow. When the mistral blew, Vincent tried his, tied his easel to the ground with rope to keep his canvas from blowing over. When the rain drove him inside, still he painted sunflowers, boots, his food before he ate it. Like the wind, he was driven. I saw a faux root at the orchard today, said one of Claudine's brothers at dinner. He was painting the olive trees purple. Claudine let the others laugh. Perhaps she would see the purple trees leaning against the wall in the yellow house. They say he paints at night, said one of his sisters. Yes, I have seen him, said Papa, with a straw hat on his face on his head, and burning candles in the brim. He claims to paint by the candlelight. The wind has blown his mind away. The wind, said my mom, or the liquor he drinks. Claudine remembered Vincent's painting of the night cafe. The blues and oranges, the strange people silent and dark. She wished she could make paintings that could talk without words, as Vincent did. She wished she could make a painting of Vincent that would show her family that sh what she saw inside him. In October, Vincent covered the inside walls of the yellow house with a new coat of whitewash. We have to make the house ready, he cried. My friend Paul is coming to stay. When Claudine went upstairs to sweep, she saw that the spare room was newly whitewashed and paintings of sunflowers were hung on the walls. In Vincent's room, the bed and chairs were painted the color of butter and the windowsills were painted green. The bright red cloth covered the bed and a blue basin stood on the orange table. A crazy room, muttered my mom. I think it gives me a headache. But Claudette thought she would love a room like Vincent's, bright as summer. Soon there was another painter at the Yellow House. His name was Paul. Eagerly, Claudine followed the painters to Orchard one noon. They set up their easels near the apple trees and began to paint. Soon she saw that Paul used also used vivid colors, though his were deep rather than bright. Vincent's colors were shouts, and Paul's were singing voices. Not like that, cried Vincent when he looked at Paul's work. 
You miss the violet shadow here. Am I not right, my young friend? He called to Claudine. Claudine saw, saw violet, Vincent's violet in the tree's shadow. Paul had painted his shadow blue, and she thought she saw that too. Then she saw her own color. It's purple, she said, with red mixed in. But neither man heard her. They were arguing, an arguing angrily about which of them was right. On Christmas Day, bells rang over all of Arlay. While her family prepared for church, Claudine ran outside to feed bread to the pigeons, whose, whose song filled the courtyard. Coo-roo, sang the pigeons. Coo-roo, coo-roo. Claudine scattered crumbs and watched the sun paint the building's gold. After Miss Claudine and her family strolled through Arlay to greet their friends, horses drew wagons through the streets. Happy shouts filled the air. A crowd of people thronged the square in front of the yellow house. Their shrill voices frightened Claudine. Had something happened to Vincent? She pushed through them. Is something wrong? She cried. They have taken Fauru away, the people replied. Fauru and his friend had a fight, and Vincent cut off the lobe of his own ear. For many weeks, Claudine could not go to the yellow house. No one was there. Dust gathered inside. The neighbors were glad that Vincent was gone, but Claudine was not glad. She worked with my mom day after day and wished the sun could give her more light. At the close of winter, the painter returned to the white to the yellow house. Claudine and my mom returned two to clean. Claudine thought sadly that Vincent seemed tired. The joy had gone from his eyes. He could not bring himself to paint, but often stumped at his window, staring across a, the Place La Martine. One day, while she scrubbed, Claudine heard shouting, Fauru, Fauru, the children chanted. Claudine looked up in dismay. Would they never leave Lince Vincent alone? Vincent opened the window and yelled, but the children kept chanting, Fauru, Fauru. Hurt and enraged, Vincent threw his chair out the window. Then some paintings. Oh no, cried Claudine. She grabbed the painter's arm. The youth scattered. Adults ran for the near, nearby cafe, shaking their fists and shouting at Vincent. My mom pushed Claudine out the yellow house. Under the feet of angry men, Claudine found a small painting of Vincent's two battered shoes. She set it carefully out of the harm's way. Come away from there, said my mom. Those men are not fair to Vincent, Claudine said boldly. She felt her face grow hot. You are as foolish as the painter, scolded my mom. But Claudine could not keep still. The boys were mean, she said. They called him names. What of it, said my mom. A man does not care if children call him names. But Claudine thought that someone should care. Vincent's neighbors had become afraid of him. They signed a petition to ban him from living in the yellow house. The magistrate granted their request. When the time came for Vincent to leave, the neighbors gathered to watch and gossip. Claudine did not want to stand with them. She gathered through the whispering crowd and knocked on the door of the yellow house. The crowd quieted. The door opened a crack. Well, said Vincent, his eyes were sad. I came to tell you I like your painting, said Claudine loudly. A tiny light came into Vincent's eyes. Do not tell the others, he joked, or they will make you leave too. Her, he handed Claudine a small painting. Sunflowers blazed from its curls of light. For you, he said. Claudine hugged the painting and ran home. She understood that Vincent had said goodbye and that she clenched her teeth to keep them from crying. But in her heart, she felt glad. She felt as strong as the sun, as fierce as the minstrel. Vincent had given her the eyes to see the heart of a sunflower, brave and bold, filled with fire. Thank you for listening today.